a marketing rebel, marketing rebel. All right, stop buying ads to bad offers. Hey, I'm Nate Kennedy, and I'm back with a video here. I'm gonna give you three tips, three strategies that you can use today to make sure that you get closer to a winning offer before you start wasting money on paid ads going forward. So, have you ever put an offer together where you're super excited to release it to the market and it just fell on, just tanked, did awful? You didn't, it just did not work out, right? If you say no, then two things. One, you're lying. <laughs> or two, you just haven't made enough offers, right? Because every once in a while, somebody hits a home run right out of the gate, but that is very, very rare in the marketing space. So if you are out there thinking and you're looking at other people in the online space that are making offers and creating these different funnels and things like that, the ones that usually, re that are, you, you would see someone who puts out like 10 different offers and like a, three months period. Well, they're testing all those things. Not all of them are winners. Just because you see it doesn't make it a winner. So here's three ways right now that you can use to test your offer going forward. Now, the reason we like to test things is to make sure that the market wants it or the market's at least interested in it. So these ways are not you know, they're not foolproof, they're not 100%, they're not bulletproof, 100% guaranteed to, to make sure that you have winning offers. There's a lot of other pieces that go into it, but these three ways will reduce your amount of failure, increase your amount of success, and will help you know right out of the gate whether you got a bad offer or a good offer. And here's what they are. Number one, one of my favorites, you can run a one-step funnel campaign so what this is, is a way that you can put together, what you can do the one step funnel campaign, create a very detailed offer. An offer really could be just one headline, right? A lot of great offers sell the opportunity, the business, the, you know, people, you, you create the headline and right then and there, you can determine whether or not the audience is interested in it. So you create a very compelling, descriptive headline that describes exactly what the end results going to be formed there's different ways to create headlines you can do different strategies there but either way the headline should portray what the result is that they're going to get you put that up there and then you put on you let them vote on it yes no yes no and now you can go ahead and set up a simple one-step funnel ad campaign so you will buy some ads of this campaign and once you get enough data in, you'll know right away whether people are interested in it because they're voting yes and no on it. If you get a bunch of people that say they have no desire to deal with it or, or if you don't even get people clicking on the headline, clicking on the ad, going to the page and engaging the page, you most likely do not have a winning offer. So you wanna craft the messaging different. Now, you're an offer, let me explain this to you. When we step back on an offer, an offer in itself is something that you're putting out in the marketplace. It's not so much the delivery mechanism or what you're doing for somebody, it's the offer. So you can sell the same offer in different ways into different markets as well. So you might have a, a service and you wanna attack a different segment of the market. You're gonna have a different headline. So keep that in mind when you're creating your one-step funnel. Know exactly kind of who you're trying to attract. So when you put that message in front of them, you set up your targeting, when they engage, they work and they don't. Here's one that actually tanked for us. So we put a message out there and we did a one-step funnel and testing out a marketing campaign for a marketing service without getting all the details, but we put it out there. I was super excited about it, thought it was gonna explode. It did not. Our lead cost was like $15 just for someone to vote on whether they wanted to learn the topic. It did not work. So we adjusted it and adjusted it just until we got the right messaging. So. There's that one. That is the one, that's one, one strategy you can use. Now, a second strategy you can use, and you probably see this one often if you're on Facebook. So there's Facebook groups. If you have your own group that you're engaged with, that you're communicating with, you can always take the one-step funnel concept and you can create that organic post 
inside of a group and see what sort of engagement you get if it's a targeted group for people that you want to help. And you see this often, people will do like, there are different ways of doing it. You can do the simple headline uh, strategy. Hey, you know, put the headline. If you'd like more, you know, comment below. You also see the, the long form strategy. I get, you know, you call it organic. They create these long form kind of descriptions of a result and what they're doing. And then would you like this? Would you like me to do a deeper training on it? Click comment below, right? So that's one way that you see groups being used. It's another great strategy for you uh, that you can leverage. But hey, Nate, what if I don't have my own group? Well, you know, you could potentially go post in other groups if that's the kind of group it is. But don't be that that that, uh, that annoying kind of spammer in a group. If there's not a lot of people posting that kind of stuff, and the guy or the group owner runs a pretty tight ship and doesn't want people spamming crap in there, don't go do that because it's just going to get you booted out of it, right? It's not where the short term wins, not worth the long term uh, effect on that. So the third strategy that I would like uh, to push out here that I think is huge, and this is where email comes into huge opportunity for your business. So emailing your subscribers if you have them, and if you don't have email subscribers, why not? You need them. But uh, emailing your subscribers is a fast, fast way to know whether or not you should roll out a new offer, a new service, a new product, because they're gonna tell you you can go ahead and put up a, a simple survey, send it out to them, ask them if, hey, we're putting together the service, are you interested? They're gonna tell you because that you already have a relationship with them. So that's gonna be your fastest, most effective way to getting to an end result on whether or not you have a good offer, you have a good product, you have a good service that people are gonna be interested in. Because if they're already listening to you and they're already customers, going directly to them is the best fastest strategy to, to get your answers. So doing at least one of these things will improve your success rate. Not doing it at all is guaranteed that you're just going to be guessing all along the way. So with that said, use one of these three strategies. Run a one-step funnel campaign. Have a Facebook group that you're engaged with or that you communicate a lot in that you can test your message in or if you have subscribers, and if you don't have subscribers, once again, why not? You need them. As you want to email your subscriber base, either a simple survey, you could even send them the one-step funnel to get the result that you want. So with that said, if you gain value out of this video, we grow by your likes, your shares, and giving you value. So if you would go ahead and like, comment, or share with somebody who could gain value from this video as well, thank you very much, appreciate you.